Good morning, First Pilgrim Calvary. Um, this is Pastor Green coming to you on this morning for our Sunday school lecture. Um, listen, I'm excited about Sunday school and what the Lord is going to do um, for our Sunday school ministry or uh, and in through in our Sunday school ministry um, here at the First Pilgrim Calvary Missionary Baptist Church. Um, uh, like I told the story to um, um, our director um, of Sunday school education, Sister Gwen Morgan. Um, uh, told her that I, I, Sunday school is a big priority for me. Um, I grew up in the house of my great grandfather, who was um, one of the most well known. Um, he was a head deacon, but he was also one of the most well known Sunday school superintendents in St. John the Baptist Parish um, before he passed away in 2012. Um, so I. I have box loads of old Sunday school books. Um, um, I, I, I have memories of going to Sunday school um, as a child. Um, so Sunday school is going to be something that we prioritize here at the First Pilgrim Carry Missionary Baptist Church. I thank all of you who have been tuning tuning into our Sunday school virtually. Um, we're going to be expanding this platform for Sunday school even after returning to in-person worship. Um, we're going to be looking at some different things um, uh, 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 on how we can expand Sunday school for our kids and our adults. Um, so let's open with a word of prayer. Eternal Father, we come at this hour to say thank you. Um, Father, we thank you for this spirit of sharing, um, this time of fellowship, even virtually, God. Um, we pray now, Father, that you would bless us in this Sunday school lecture, that we would um, hear what it is that you want us to hear, learn what it is that you want us to learn from the text on tonight, uh, on this morning, rather. And when it's all said and done, Father, we'll be ever so cautious, ever so careful to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor for us in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, so once again, we have a um, good lesson on today. On this morning, we're going to be talking about God's first instructions to Israel. Um, as we know, we've been dealing with the children of Israel um, for some time now um, in our Sunday school lessons. Uh, and now they have reached the point. They have reached the point where they are arriving at Sinai. Um, they are arriving at Sinai. They are um they are um, they've departed from Egyptian captivity and um, you know the story of the children of Israel how they went through that period of what I call wilderness wandering um, so now they find themselves at Sinai um, so God is about to give his first instructions to them following their captivity and their arrival at Sinai um, so our, our, our text is found in the book of Exodus chapter number 19 verses 1 through 9 that's Exodus chapter number 19, verses 1 through 9. A quick introduction. John Adams, one of America's founding fathers, once declared our Constitution was made only for a moral and religious people. It was wholly inadequate to the government of any other. Sadly, those who lack the moral base that comes from God and his revelation are often wholly irresponsible. They see freedom as an opportunity to take advantage of others, spew hatred, destroy property, or demand approval for any and every perverse idea that comes along. Doesn't that sound like a picture of our country today? That we, uh, we, 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 we think freedom means that we can do what it is that we want. Yeah, but we have to understand that, especially when it comes to God, that freedom does not come without consequence. Um, the Israelites were at a crucial juncture in their history. They had been freed from the oppression of the Egyptians, but the law that God was about to give them would call them to responsibility. So here is the dilemma for the children of Israel. The dilemma is that, yes, they've been delivered from Egyptian captivity. They've been freed from slavery. They've been freed from their bondage. But now what it is is that God... Now the dilemma is that God is about to give them responsibility. Um, so tonight, uh, to this morning rather, this is um, I believe that that word responsibility is a great uh, is a great word for us to take into consideration um, because of the fact that um, uh, God has given us responsibility through His Word. Um, um, through 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 his commandments, through what he has written in his word, God has given us some responsibility. And for many of us, responsibility can be a dilemma. Responsibility can be a problem because to whom much is given, 
much is required. So um, on tonight, on today, we're going to deal with the children of Israel um, as God gives them their first instructions. He's about to give them um, the laws, the the law that um, that they must live by. So as they arrive at Sinai, let's look at Exodus chapter number uh, 19 and verse number one. Verse number one reads in the third month when the exodus of Israel um, were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, they uh, the same day came they into the wilderness of Sinai for they were departed from Rephidim uh, and were come to the desert of Sinai and had pitched in the wilderness and there Israel camped before the mount. So um, as we look at verse one, verse one talks of how the Israelites arrived in the wilderness of Sinai um, and they were in, it was in the third month after the departure from Egypt. In those three months, they had seen God deliver them from it. So, so, so let's let's take a uh, let's take a, a, a let's make a checklist of all that the Lord has done for them to get them to this point at Sinai. So number one. Excuse me. Uh. He, he delivers them from the Egyptian captivity, something they had prayed for for years. They have now been delivered from the hands of their uh, oppressors. Check. Uh, they've seen God part the Red Sea. He delivered them from the Red Sea. We know the story of how they were running from Pharaoh's, from Pharaoh's army. And only thing that was before them was the Red Sea. And Moses, it was Moses who stretched out his rod. And uh, it was through the power of God at work through Moses and his rod that the Red Sea was parted. And the children of Israel were able to pass through on dry land. And not only were they able to pass through on dry land, but their enemies were consumed by the same um, or by the same sea. We know that story. So they've been delivered from Egyptian captivity. God has met them uh, um, um, at the Red Sea. Uh, uh, but then also uh, uh, they, 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 uh, he, he delivered them from uh, um, the Amalekites and uh, 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 and and they and they and the the force that they met, were met with um from them um they also they had also witnessed God's miraculous provision of food and water for them. God has done so much for the children of Israel at this point that they are at now at Sinai. Um, for, uh, from their initial point of departure in Egypt, they had traveled about 300 miles. The last leg of the journey took them about 12 miles south of, uh, of Rephidim uh, uh, to the desert area um, that was before the mount. The water God gave them at Rephidim probably continued um, and the manna continued to provide them with food. So, uh, like I said, they, they've reached a point now. Where, like I said, they've been freed from their from their captivity. They've been freed from their bondage. But not only that, God has provided for them every step of the way. From the time that he delivered them from Pharaoh and his army. From the time he parted the Red Sea. From the time he delivered them from the Amalekites. From the time, for up until now, all the way up until this point, their needs have been met. They've been provided for so so now we see in verse three that uh as they uh as they they are faced with a reminder of all of the things that God has done for them now here it is that God is about to give them his message for the people God's message for Israel if we look at verse number three it says that uh and 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 Moses uh went up unto unto God and the Lord called up uh called unto him out of the mountain saying thou Shall thou shall uh, thou shall thus shall thou say to the house of Jacob, excuse me, and tell the children of Israel, ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bear ye on uh, bear you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. Now therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then uh, then ye shall be a, a, a peculiar treasure 
unto me above all people, for all of the earth is mine, and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests uh, and a an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. So God has given his message. He's given his message to Moses to bring back to the children of Israel. He's basically tell basically to sum up what God has told uh what, to sum up what God has told Moses. He's basically telling him that if you keep my commandments, if you keep your covenant with me, if you will obey my voice, then there's a blessing with your obedience uh, for your obedience. There's a reward for your obedience. So, uh, 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 so, 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 like I said, we, we've gotten, we've gotten a, a reminder of God's faithfulness. As Moses ascended to the mountain to appear before God, Moses, of course, was familiar with this mountain and perhaps went to the place where the Lord had first spoken to him at the burning bush. God spoke again to him there on the mountain, giving him a message to relate to the people below. Interestingly, the law referred to the people as the house of Jacob and the children of Israel. The two phrases are synonymous, reflecting a poetic nature. Moses was his his duty from from God's message was to remind the people of uh, of their deliverance by the law. Specifically, they were to remember what he had done to the Egyptians. This refers to the plagues that humbled Pharaoh, the people, and the gods of Egypt, and eventually brought about Israel's release. We might think of it somehow, uh, somewhat uh, surprising to hear this reminder when the events the Lord spoke of should have been fresh in the Israelites' minds since they had only occurred three months before. However, with every difficulty along the way, the people were ready to turn on Moses and even return to the slavery of Egypt um, uh, as, as if they had completely forgotten what the Lord had done for them. So we, we know that aspect of the story as well as a reminder of how the children of Israel, as they wandered in the wilderness, um, they, they got they got to the point to where they were frustrated with Moses and frustrated with God. And they were ready to return back to Egypt because they, they had the mindset that, look, at least when we were enslaved, we had a little bit better than this. They, they, they lost, and I hate to I hate to yeah, interject this point in there, but they lost faith in the process. They lost faith in the process that God had them in on the way to their promise. My, 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 that's powerful for somebody here watching on this morning that you should never lose faith in the process. Uh, that is that because the process is essential, uh, uh, in, in reaching the promise. The process is essential for you to go through in order for you to reach your promise. So, so, so that was the issue for the children of Israel, but God, he reassures, he tells Moses, he gives Moses some instructions to tell the children of Israel, look, I want you, children of Israel, I want you to specifically remember what it is that I've done for you. Remember where it is I've brought you from, because if you understand where I've brought you from, you can understand where you are right now. And if you understand where you are right now, you will understand. You can you can get an understanding of where you're going. Amen. So 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 he was to to remind the children of Israel of God's faithfulness. And that's a good point for us on today. My brothers and my sisters, that not only should we not lose faith in the process as we journey to our promise, but we should always be reminded of God's faithfulness towards us because it is in our memory of his record that we can get a better understanding of what he's able to do for me, for us in the future. Look, I understand there's a lot going on. I understand that there's that there's much uncertainty about the times in which we're living. But listen, this is nothing new to God. Yeah, God, God has worked out stuff much bigger than what you find yourself dealing with. The, listen to me. The things we consider miracles are everyday business or everyday work for God. So so we've we've got to constantly remind ourselves, my brothers and sisters, because I, I, I feel personally there are some moments in life. There are some moments in life where we feel like we're in a wilderness wandering experience where we find ourselves like a, like the children of Israel. Look, we were better off when we were hurting. 
we were better off when we had to deal with with the turbulence and the the the, the turmoil of our previous past situations but but if we if we can listen to me listen to me well if we can be reminded of God's faithfulness it makes it much easier for us to trust him it, it, it much it makes it much easier for us to to trust him so 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 they were to be reminded of of God's faithfulness but then secondly um 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 we are given as we look at God's message for Israel we are given a call to covenant faithfulness look at verses 9 uh, I'm sorry look at verses 5 through um 5 through 6 verses 5 through 6 now therefore verse 5 says now therefore if you will obey me or, or obey my voice rather and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Verses 5 and 6 reiterate to us what God, the, the basis of why God is coming to Moses. He wants Moses to understand that in order for the for the people or, or for the children of Israel rather to reach where it is that they're trying to get to achieve what it is that they're trying to get what it is that they're trying to get it requires covenant faithfulness. The Lord alone had been responsible for the people's freedom. The Lord, it was nobody but the Lord that brought him brought them this far. Nobody but the Lord that brought them to the point that they were at. But th this established the obligation of the people to respond in obedience to the covenant that God was about to make with them. In other words, what God is saying is that, look, because of what I've, what I've done for you, it's only reasonable that you, that, you, that you come into agreement with me. Yeah, come into agreement with me with the confidence that I'll, be, I, I, I'll keep you going forward uh, in the future. Uh, uh, unlike other divine covenants in the Bible, the other being introduced here was, uh, the, the one being introduced here was clearly conditional. The people would enjoy certain blessings and privileges only if they obeyed God's requirements. My brothers and my sisters, listen to me and listen to me well. In order for us uh, 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 to receive certain things, I understand we, we, we're looking for God to do a lot of things. It requires us to be faithful. It requires obedience on our behalf. Now, I'm not a believer in that saying God helps those who help themselves because if, if, if you could help yourself, you would need God. But I do believe in holding up our end of the bargain. I, I do believe that if we are, if we are faithful to God, He will remain faithful to us. He's faithful to us even if I, in our unfaithfulness. So listen to me here. Thank you, Holy Ghost. If God is good to you, even when you aren't good to him, imagine how much better he, he can be to you if you learn to be good to him. If God is faithful to you when you ain't doing right, imagine how much more faithful, imagine how many more blessings you could see. Imagine how much more prosperity you can see if you would just be faithful to him, if you would just be obedient to his will. And to his word. But 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 like I said earlier, that this was the this was the 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 uh the issue, the dilemma for the children of Israel. Because they're they're about to reach a point where where they find being faithful to God is hard sometimes. That that's where they find themselves. So 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 we, we have a reminder of God's faithfulness, a call to covenant faithfulness, and then now now we're about to see uh, uh, Israel's commitment to the Lord. Look at verse seven. Verse seven says, "And Moses came to, uh, came and called for the elders of the people and laid before their faces all the words which the Lord commanded him." So Moses relays the message that he has for the children of Israel from from God. Uh, verse number eight. And all the people answered together and said, all, "All that the Lord hath spoken, we will do." And Moses returned with the words of the people unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Moses, Lo, I come unto thee in the thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak with thee, and believe thee forever. And Moses told the words of the people unto the Lord. 
So, so, so a promise made, a promise made, a promise made, uh, verse, verses seven and eight, uh, the, 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 the children of Israel, uh, uh, with the words of the Lord, uh, uh, with the words of the Lord, uh, with, with the words that the Lord had given him, Moses returned to the people. This pattern continues in the following chapters as Moses goes up and down the mountain, hearing from the Lord and conveying his words to the people. This would further establish him as Israel's chosen, chosen leader and God as their true king. Upon his return to the mountain, Moses gathered the elders around him and set them before uh, set set before them all that the Lord had said. The elders were recognized leaders among the various tribes of Israel. Uh, um, so, 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 on, 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 on the one hand, given their recent rebellious ways, it might uh, seem surprising that the that the people unanimously declare all that the Lord has spoken. We will do. It appears the people were genuine in their desire to follow follow the Lord, and this met with the Lord's. Uh, this was met with the Lord's approval. However, it is safe to say that the commitment was naive. They overestimated both their ability and their desire to fully obey the Lord. Listen, we've got to be mindful. Uh, we've got to be mindful of God's expectations for us. We've got to be mindful of God's expectations for us um, because it is in his expectations for us, my brothers and my sisters, that 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 we get a better understanding of how it is that we ought to serve, how it is that we ought to remain in obedience to him. And the children of Israel, they find themselves in the position where they, they, they that, 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 that that they've made a promise to God. They made a promise to God, but it is serious. Listen to me, it's serious. When you make a promise to God, that's serious business. When you when you make a promise to God, it requires you to do it do so with the understanding that listen, obedience is always better than sacrifice. So 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 it was it God will always bless you in your obedience. God will always bless you in your obedience. Um, and, and they find themselves, the children of Israel, that is, they find themselves in the position where um, they, they've made a promise to God um, with the understanding that if they uphold their bargain, if they uphold their end of the bargain, if they remain faithful to God, that that's, that's going to be some benefits. Uh, uh, and now we see a promise delivered in verse 9. Moses, Moses' purpose was to formally deliver the people's response to God, a formal I mean, affirming their desire to obey him and be his special people. Before he could uh, deliver the people's promise, however, the Lord spoke to him. The Lord said he was going to come to Moses in a thick cloud. God's presence had already been manifested in the cloud that led them through the wilderness. But apparent, apparently it would appear uh, darker and thicker and the people would hear the Lord speak to Moses from the cloud. This looks looks forward to the Lord's appearance on the mountain when he spoke to Moses so that Israel could hear. Uh, this act would affirm Moses' leadership and prophetic office and give the people confidence in him so that he spoke God's word to them. There would be no doubt about the, uh, 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 of their uh, authenticity. The people of Israel committed themselves to obeying the Lord and serving as his unique representatives on earth. My brothers and my sisters, um, um, I, I believe it is important for us to, to serve God, uh, um, to, to, to continue um, to, to, to be mindful of what God expects from us and, and realize that when we fulfill our expectations, when we fulfill his expectations for us, rather, that it comes so with reward. Uh, uh, God, 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 as God's people, we should always trust him to keep his promises. Uh, 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 and, and we should always remember what God has done for us as when we remember what God has done for us. It strengthens our faith. It strengthens our faith as we as we wait for what he's going to do in the future. Uh, 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 we should also, number three says, uh, 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 and we're, we're looking at our practical points is number three says God's people should demonstrate to a watching world that they belong to the one true God through their obedience. Uh, that's another powerful point that it is through our obedience that we show, uh, God, our loyalty. We can't say we love the Lord, 
but live a life full of disobedience. Every chance you get, you should you should strive to to fulfill to fulfill God's will for your life and live obedience uh, or in alignment with His plan for your life. Um, number four, God uses His people to bring hope and salvation to a dying world. Number five, commitment to the Lord to God's word unites His people and gives their lives meaning. Number six, God reveals uh, Himself to those who will trust him. Eternal Father, we come now just to say thank you. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time of sharing. And um, we pray, Father God, that you will bless us in our parking lot service uh, in, a, in, in about an hour, God, that you would allow us to have a hallelujah good time in the word. Allow your word to continue to fall on good ground, that we would take it, hide it in our hearts, that we might not sin against you. And when it's all said and done, Father, we'll be ever so careful to give you all the praise all of the glory and all the honor for in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you, First Pilgrim Calvary. Um, I look forward to seeing you all in about an hour here at the sanctuary. We're going to be in the parking lot again. Um, please, um, my brothers and my sisters, let's stay tuned. Like us on Facebook. Like us on Facebook. I'm posting um, a lot of updates uh, concerning the church on Facebook. Um, follow us at First Pilgrim Calvary Missionary Baptist Church. Search the whole church's name on Facebook and you will see a gold icon with the church's logo. Um, that's our official church facebook page subscribe to our youtube channel continue to copy the link to these videos share it with your friends co-workers relatives so that we can get the word out that there is a reality in serving a true and living savior and that we are about our father's business here at the first period and Kevin missionary baptist church well family i love you i'm praying with you i'm praying for you god bless you and god keep you is our prayer